Hi there guys, today I'm going to take you through the process of making coffee with the Japanese coffee siphon. I'm going to start off by measuring out 30 grams of coffee beans. I'm going to quickly zero the scale. And there we have 28 grams. And 30 grams. Okay, now that this has been done, I'm going to put these coffee beans into the coffee grinder. I tend to make use of a manual coffee grinder. So there we go, the coffee grind is loaded. And there we go. I'm now going to grind the coffee and this takes approximately 112 cranks with this particular coffee grinder. That took about 114 cycles. So now the coffee grinding is complete. I'm now going to move on to setting up the Japanese siphon. I'm going to start off by putting the filter in the machine and I do this by using this mechanism. The filter itself is a metal um, wire mesh and I fit it into this structure here which holds it and allows it to make a good filter for the coffee. I'm going to place it in the machine itself, like so, and it's kept in place with a spring. I'm now going to go ahead and boil some water. Now here it goes, I'm going to transfer the water to the bottom flask of the machine. And I fill the flask to halfway. Okay, now it's time to light the Bunsen burner. And there it goes. Okay, at this point, I'm now going to let the water stand there for a while, just so that the steam can displace all the air that's in the flask. Okay, as soon as the water starts to bubble, I'll put the top section of the machine on. At that point, all the air that's in the top part of the flask will be displaced. Okay, this should be long enough. I'm going to place the top section of the machine into the neck of the flask. And as you can see, the water starts rising up. And that's because the steam pressure that's building up in the bottom flask is forcing the water up into the top section of the machine. Once all the water is in the top section of the machine, I'm going to turn the heat down a bit. Okay, there we go. It's all in the top section now. Okay, so just turn the heat down slightly. And at this point, I'm going to now add the coffee grounds. I'm going to give it a stir. Just to ensure that all the coffee is in the water. There we go. Now there are various theories with regards to this. Um, some people say you should leave the coffee in the system for about 1 minute and 55 seconds. 
What I personally do is observe the top section to see where the coffee grounds are floating. And as soon as it comes to a point where the coffee grounds are no longer floating, then I turn off the heat. But what I do is I let the coffee grounds give off the gas which causes them to float and I'll stir it about two times during the process just to let them release the gas to see whether they fall to the bottom. Okay, it's time to stir the first time. Okay, and you can already see that there are less coffee grounds floating at the top. Most of them have sunk down towards the bottom already. Okay, there's still a thin line of them floating. So I'll leave it for another 10 seconds or so and then I'm going to give it another stir. Okay, and here it goes. Okay, at this point, I'm now going to turn off the heat. While there's still some rotation in the coffee at the top and what starts to happen now is because the water vapor in the bottom flask is now cooling it condenses and because there's no more air left in the bottom flask this actually creates a vacuum which sucks the coffee from the top section of the machine down to the bottom section through the filter so in a way, this coffee is somewhere between espresso and what you would get from a French press coffee machine because the coffee is drawn through the filter under pressure. Okay, and if this is successful, you should actually get all the coffee grounds forming a hump. In, this, in the center of the top flask. And as you can see, it's starting to happen. Okay, and you're getting, you could say, a form of crema forming on top of the coffee in the bottom flask as it comes to the end of the cycle. Okay, now you start to get bigger bubbles forming and this indicates that all the coffee or all the liquid you could say is now has now been drawn from the top section of the machine into the bottom flask and this completes the process now that the process is completed I'm going to remove the top section of the machine okay, and if there's any liquid coming through and is on the chain I'm just going to remove that by dragging the, train, the chain itself on the side of the bottom flask. Okay, and that now gets put in its holder. I'm going to remove the Bunsen burner. And I'm now going to pour the coffee into a cup. Okay, and in the case of this cup of coffee, I'm going to be making a hazelnut flavored latte. So here goes the hazelnut flavored syrup. I just use a tablespoon of syrup. I'm going to stir that in. Okay, then at this point, I'm just going to add some milk. And I'm going to stir the milk in.
And there you have it. A nice cup of hazelnut flavored coffee.